Good evening and a warm welcome to equipping you for victory. It's so good to be together again and gather around the Word of God. And the Holy Ghost will be the blessed teacher of the Word of God. I trust you've been having a great time on a Sunday morning and a Sunday night as we fellowship together, worship God together, give to God together and receive the word of God together. It's absolutely awesome. And so I'm going to continue a bit from where we left off on Sunday night. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is a great teacher of the word of God that abides in us and we abide in the anointing. And so will you teach through my mouth teach through my thoughts, teach through the Word of God, even in my heart, and may the anointing be imparted, and may your people get understanding in the Word of God. May they get vision. May they be strengthened, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to read that portion of Scripture again in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 51 and verse 15 and verse 16. But I am the Lord, thy God, that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. I'm just looking at that verse of scripture. God, he says, I am. He's a present tense God in whatever you're going through and in this COVID-19. I am, I am Jehovah. I am the Lord. And he's thy God. He's thy God. He's my God. He's your God. And he tells us what he does. He divides the sea whose waves roared. So roaring waves do not intimidate him from dividing the sea. Dividing the sea is not going to make it easier if it's calm or if it's rough. It's the same miracle. And so you see, if you're looking at waves, like Peter was looking at waves, he began to sink. And he looked at the wind boisterous. And so, but he walked on the water. He took some steps to walk on the water. No one ever walked on the water before or after that. But uh, Jesus was walking on the water. But as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, and he began to look at the waves, then he began to sink. The scripture is saying the sea will be divided even though the waves are roaring. The sea will be divided. Why? Because he's the Lord of the angel armies. That's his name. And the way he's going to work with this, he put, says, I put my words in your mouth and I've covered thee in the shadow of my hand. And he says, that I may plant the heavens. The, what I want to talk to you about, what else? He, he's going to lay foundations of the earth. We've been looking at how he plants the heavens by us speaking. But now I want to look also, he's laying the foundations of the earth and he's also saying to Zion, the church, thou art mine. So the word of God in our mouth, us in the anointing and the anointing is in us. And we both abiding, the anointing is abiding, we abiding. God wants to lay foundations. So I'm going to go just share with you what a foundation is. He lays the foundations of the earth. A foundation is the lowest load bearing part of a building, typically below ground level. The strength of any building is its foundation. In fact, the taller the building, the deeper the foundation. And the foundation 
works with the earth. Foundation solid on the earth. And the earth and the foundation holds up the building. And so Jesus said he's building his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this building. This is showing us that some foundations are shaking in the earth and affecting the buildings. A foundation is not visible and hardly anyone talks about it. Yet buildings are admired for their beauty and their aesthetics. But the beauty and the aesthetics of the building and the whole building is because it's upheld by a foundation. Foundations of a business or organizations are like the infrastructure of a business or organization or a church. A small or narrow foundation is very limiting for what output they can be and also how long that business organization or church can last. A big or broad foundation has much more capacity. It creates much more capacity. Also a foundation is the basis or groundwork of anything. It's the groundwork of anything. The moral foundation of both society or religion. Society has a, a foundation. Religious, religions have foundation. A strong belief should have a strong foundation. A teaching of the word of God should have a strong foundation. The Bible also speaks about the foundations of the earth and the foundations of the world. The foundation, therefore, is the support of any structure. Even the throne of God has a foundation. Psalm 89 and verse 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. So we see if there's a throne for rulership in the kingdom, that foundation is righteousness and justice. The church, or Zion, also has a foundation. Isaiah 28 and verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord thy God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So this cornerstone is Jesus. And it's a sure foundation. Now Paul in the New Covenant tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with God. So you see, friend, God is not building on his own, but he doesn't also want you to build on your own. He wants you to build together with him. Anything, your family, your business, must always do it together with God. God's not going to do it alone for you, and God doesn't want you to do it alone. He's created you and his mystery, his secret, is union with you. That's why the Bible says, unless the Lord build the house. That means any enterprise, a family, a business, a career, unless the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. There are some people that have been building and even it's possible to try to build a church without God. They labor in vain. God also keeps what he builds. And I guarantee you, as you are building with God, it doesn't matter about COVID-19, 
he'll keep it. He will keep what he built. Make no mistake. And so unless the Lord keep the city, God's got to look after it. God looks after what he builds. Then the watchman will wake up in vain. You can't spend your whole night watching what you gave your life for and being gripped with worry. The answer is, let God keep what he built. First of all, build with God. And what God builds with you, he will keep. And it doesn't mean you don't watch, but you don't get up in vain. You know, you know God is keeping what you have built. And so he says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, he says, I'm a wise master builder. You see, that's an apostolic ministry. He's a wise master builder. But you ought to be a wise master builder of your own life, of your marriage, of your business, of your future. What you're building now will support you tomorrow. So make sure you build properly today. Because the worst thing to do is to get old and get destitute. Because you never built with proper foundation. So he says, I'm a master builder. He said, I've laid the foundation. He says, and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon. For no other foundation can be laid than which is Christ Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the foundation of everything. He's the foundation of your life. He's the foundation of your business. He's the foundation of your family. He must be the foundation of your church, foundation of your children. He's the foundation of everything. And that foundation of Jesus Christ has already been laid but the way we are building it, we are speaking it. Because that's why he puts the words in his, your mouth and he covers you in his anointing that he may lay the foundations. So not only do you plant the heavens, but you, you're doing a support structure in the earth. And that this house or whatever you are building or you've built with your life can stand the test of time, stand the storms of life. And after the storm has come and gone, what you built, your life, your marriage, your children, your, your business will continue to stand. Because it had strong foundation. But he does say, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, and precious stone, that foundation will stand. But you can also build on a foundation with wood, hay, and stubble. And that, in the time of testing, will get burnt. And you'll be saved, but... There's nothing you can take through into eternity because you're never built properly. Now Ephesians 2 verse 19 says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And then Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. Then it says, In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth in a, into a holy temple in the Lord. So corporately, we are the temple of the Lord. And each one of us are living stones. But the foundation, according to the scripture, is that there is a chief cornerstone that is Jesus Christ and he's precious 
uh, but there is the apostles and prophets. That's not meaning that they died for you. It means it's an apostolic church. It's a prophetic church. That the word that they preach and teach you lays a solid foundation of Jesus Christ. And so their teachings is what you can build your life on. You need an apostolic ministry and you need a prophetic ministry. Then 2 Timothy 2.19, still speaking about this foundation. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. There's a seal of God on a foundation. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's the foundation of God also. It has a seal, and God knows who, who, who belongs to him. And that's why he says, because you belong to me, you better depart. Get away from sin. Get away from iniquity. Then God reveals his great love for the building on this foundation. The building on this foundation is actually Zion. And he's going to speak tenderly. You see, the foundation gets laid. But once the foundation is laid, the foundation is Jesus Christ, who he is. He is God. He became a man to live like a man with God in him. He was God and man, but he was incarnated. And then he went through death to defeat death. And he rose out of death. And when he rose out of death, you rose out of death. And he ascended into heaven for you to be his body. That is the foundation, the revelation. And that foundation is sure. Nothing can move that foundation. You can build how big you want to build on that foundation. No other foundation that can be laid except than that which has been laid, which is Christ. It means must be laid. The foundation is who Christ is. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. You are, you are God. You've come in the flesh. God has come in the flesh. He was incarnated. He became a man to enter into death, to resurrect, to ascend, and to cause me now to ascend with him so I can now become the building on this foundation. And so we become the walls and we become the windows and then there's the roof and then it becomes a household of faith, a, a glorious temple that God says the glory of the latter will be greater than the glory of the former. Then we start experiencing the tender love of God and Paul prays for this. In Ephesians 3.17, because you must be grounded in this love. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, to know the love of Christ, which passeth all human understanding that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, then now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. And so this is very picturesque language because the, the language of God is vision and dreams. He's speaking about our lives individually and he's speaking about our lives corporately. We are locked down, but God doesn't want you to be locked out 
of the body. I draw this to a close and I'm going to pray for you that you may understand what God is doing in the time of shaking. He is dividing the sea whose waves roar. Don't get caught up with the roaring of waves. See the sea divided. See a dividing line, yeah. Then understand that God is putting his words in your mouth. You've got to meditate and then you've got to speak. And then he is covering you in his anointing. You're dwelling in that secret place of the Most High. And you are in the anointing. The anointing is in you too. And then God is laying foundations. I believe the foundations that are being laid for the whole world, for the whole earth, for the, all the nations of the world, is the foundation of the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus' incarnation, His life, His death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess of beings in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. They're going to bow their stubborn knee. You better bow it now and you just flow with the God. It's a beautiful life. And they're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God has promised us victory. And this is equipping you for victory. You bow to the Lordship of Jesus. And you have victory. I want to pray for you. I want to say a prayer for you. How I pray for you every night. I want to say the prayer that I pray for my home here, yeah? my personal family. And then I'm going to say the prayer how I pray for the church and, and, and how I do it. And it, it works. I've been living here in this place now for 10 years, more, it must be the 11th year. And this prayer has worked here. We've never had a burglary. We, God has kept us. We use the blood of Jesus. We use the word of God. I want to pray that prayer for you. And, and just for two minutes, I'm going to pray the prayer that I pray here. So you listen to that prayer. I'm your father. I'm a father in spirit. And I'm a wise master builder. And so you be careful how you build. Don't build with wood, hay, and stubble. You build with Gold, silver, and precious stone can stand the test of time. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, I pray for my family. As I pray every night, I mention them all by names. And then I draw a bloodline, the blood of Jesus Christ, around their lives. I speak the sprinkled speaking blood of Jesus Christ over all my family, all my children and grandchildren. And then I speak the sprinkled speaking blood of Jesus around the boundary walls of this house. I speak the sprinkled speaking blood of Jesus in the entrance gates and exit gates, in the front yard, the back yard, and the side yard. I speak the sprinkled speaking blood of Jesus over this entire house as a canopy of blood to protect it. And now I write above the roof in the atmosphere that Jesus Christ is Lord. I use my mouth and I write over this house, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
I sprinkle the speaking blood of Jesus on those words. I see those words dripping with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that the anointing is causing those words to be like a fluorescent light blinking in the night. And I thank you that this inheritance has fallen in pleasant places. The lines have fallen in pleasant places. So I thank you. I bring the church before you at New Covenant Fellowship. I pray for this precious work of God. I pray for every family that is represented at New Covenant Fellowship. I pray for the youngest to the oldest. Everyone is included. Their children and their grandchildren. I speak the sprinkled speaking blood from heaven planted into the earth around every individual, every household. Lord Jesus, your word says Moses sprinkled the blood on the people. I speak the sprinkled speaking blood with my mouth unto all the people of new covenant. The blood sprinkles upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of mercy, the blood of grace, the blood of provision, the blood of entrance into the goodness of God. And over everyone's life, every family, I write over the families. Jesus Christ is Lord. I write with my tongue as a pen of a skillful writer over every individual, every child, every young person, every old person. Jesus Christ is Lord and I sprinkle that blood of Jesus over there. Speaking blood. Speak it in Jesus' name. And I thank you for safety, protection, and immunity over the people of God. And I give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you pray like that and pray over your house, pray over your children, pray like that over your business. It's not your conventional type of prayer. These are not the times of a religious jargon that just doesn't work. No, it's our days of revelation, knowledge of the Lord, knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. God richly bless you. Thank you that you have been equipped for victory in Jesus' name. Now we're going to play a song and give you the opportunity to worship God with your tithes and your offerings. Or even if you want to sow a seed, you can do it during the song or during the advert of what we are doing. And so get onto your phone and uh, do the transfer. And maybe you just want to sow a seed uh, because you are blessed with the equipping for victory today. And you are so grateful. So. Oh, God.
richly bless you and we'll meet you in your home again on Sunday morning at Harvest Eight. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Amen.